Hi everybody, in this video we will be talking about the terrain. So when you go to 3D object, uh, on the hierarchy you right click and go to 3D object and you go down here to terrain, um, you'll get this terrain uh, game object. All it contains is a transform, a terrain component, and a terrain collider component. The terrain collider component it has terrain data, so this just has a bunch of data of different terrains. Uh, this is the third terrain I made in this project, so um, this is new terrain three. But if I go to, let's say, the last one I had, uh, it says right here, it has different uh, terrain. Would you like to assign it if, it I, if I assign it? And as you can see, really nothing changes. Um, I don't know. If yeah, as you can see, nothing really changes, but if I had, a, let's say, a different uh, physics material or something like that, you could do that. And then you could also enable tree colliders, so you could have that checked. And then um, a physics material is just a material to add on the terrain. Physics materials could add uh, like slipper slipperiness to a surface, or it could add stickiness to a surface, so uh, different uh, physics materials that you create do different things. So uh, let's say I go to the assets on the project tab and I right click, I could go to create and I could create a physics material if I see it right here. There's 2D physics material and regular one, um, uh, regular 3D. I'll show you guys that in a later video. Uh, so for the terrain, right here this first one it creates neighbor terrain so if you click it and it adds these little um, squares around the terrain if you click any of these squares it will add another terrain so if i click that it adds another terrain as a neighbor terrain and then it gives you these check marks it could uh, fill high map using the neighbors so whatever high map this one has it will use it for the neighbors and it could also uh fill the height map address mode which right now is clamp or I can mirror it so I could copy the the also the address mode so after that there's a uh, paint terrain so when you go to paint terrain uh, they have a, a bunch of different options first is raise or lower terrain pretty obvious um, you could click it and you could either raise it and if you hold shift and left click you could lower it like it says right there so you could just paint whatever you want any kind of surface stars anything you want and then uh, right here is the size of the brush so for this like right now I'm using the star brush this just makes the star bigger as you can see now for opacity if you have it 100 opacity it paints it right away perfectly with one click now, if you have a lower opac opacity, it kind of takes a minute. So let me make it a little smaller. So you, you can see it, it's not as uh, noticeable. So after that, uh, there's uh, paint holes, as this implies. You could just paint a hole anywhere you want. And as you can see, there's an actual hole and then um, you could also change the brush size and the opacity for the paint holes. You could use paint textures. So when you use paint textures, what you do is you click this edit terrain layer and you have to create a terrain or you could add a layer if you already have layers um, uh, set. So for now, I'll create a layer and uh, you could find um, different uh, textures in uh you know in the unity asset store you can make them um, or whatever this is from the standard assets so when i click it you can see it changes and now if i get close you can see the the texture and um if i go back i could also add or create another layer and let's say this layer i want to make it uh this grassy layer I could add that and it adds it into the layers and now let me lower the brush and now I could paint it uh, let me hide in the opacity oh 
I gotta click it. You gotta click uh, the the terrain layers, any one you wanna paint, and then after that you could just paint it any way you want. And then you know if you wanna use the other one, you just click on it, and that's pretty much it. And then um, you could change the opacity. So here's a good example to show you how the opacity works. If I have a high, uh, and I actually have a grass. Uh, select it and I click it one click that's how it is it shows if I have it real low and I do one click as you can see you can't really see anything I would have to hold down for a very long time and not even that so I would just switch the opacity and uh, play around with that and then after that there's set height so this you could set uh, let's say you want a mountain to be a certain height you could set it uh, depending on the world or local space. And then um, after that, you just uh, adjust it right here to the height you want. Let's say I want 40. And that's all it goes. It won't go any higher than that. And then I could also flatten tile. And I could flatten all of it. Flatten tile is uh, so just the, the, the tile. So if you have uh, a bunch of neighbors or whatever, you could flatten off. And then uh, uh, brush size, and then uh, after that, they're smooth in height. So if you have like these sharp edges over here, and you don't like how it looks, you could get one of these uh, brushes and uh, change the brush size opacity, and just click on it. And as you can see, it starts smoothing out these mountains and making it a little smoother. And then after that, there's stamped terrain. So for stamp terrain, you could uh, pick one of these. You could s choose a certain stamp height, and then you could either add to it or you could subtract it. And uh, you could uh, subtract here, or you could add it. And uh, if you add it, it just sh adds. If you subtract, as it implies, it'll just uh, subtract the. Oh, I have to add it right here. And it'll just subtract the, the area around it or delete it. And then uh, you could also change brush size and everything like that. So that's that for the terrain or the this paint terrain. Now for trees, you could add trees. Um, so you could, uh, let's say, edit trees. You could add a tree. And for this, this is pretty interesting because you could also add uh, different game objects. So let's say I want to add, um, let's say I want to add a bunch of cars that are broken down or something like that. I could just click it right there. Then uh, usually it works. Maybe it don't. But I know with some game objects, it does work. So play around with the game objects. If um, just add whatever you want. Some stuff might work, some might not. Let me see if I can find something that will work. So I don't look like I'm wrong. So add. So there you go. See, it added a bunch of houses. So um, as you can see, there's a bunch of houses. If I turn the tree density to, let's say 10, it won't add as much houses. So as you can see, there's one house. Could add another house over there. And I could just keep on adding houses everywhere I want. And then once I get close enough, you'll be able to see them. And then, yeah, that's how you do that. And then uh, for trees, all that, you could add trees. You can make your own trees. I'm going to show you guys how to make your own trees uh, in a later episode, probably the next episode. I don't know if you guys want to see the trees or the ragdolls first. So just let me know uh, in the comments below if you want to see the 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 trees uh how you make trees in unity or how to make a ragdoll in unity in unity and then you could just you know once you have your trees click anywhere you want so and then you can adjust your brush size add more trees so density if you want a dense amount let's say a dense amount of trees you could uh they kind of all clutter together you could uh, randomize the tree height or you could keep it all in the same uh, height. So if you want, let's say all small ones and then you could adjust to all big ones or you could have a random height and just set 
between uh, kind of where you want the random to be. So if you wanted a little small random uh, size or higher, you could lock width to height or you could have it separate. So, and then that too, you could also adjust. And then right here, I forgot to mention, you could also adjust this. So let's say you want it to be random between these two sections right here. Just click it and uh, let me actually show better. So there you go. You can see some are really, really small. Some are really bigger or some are bigger. And then uh, you could also random tree rotation. You could click it or you could unclick it if you want it to uh, randomize the rotation or not. And then you could also have the color variation be different if you have different colors on your trees. And then, um, yeah, that's that for the, the trees. You could also hold shift and click them if you want to erase trees. So just hold in shift and click and you'll erase them. Or you can hold uh, control and click to only erase the selected tree type. So let's say I have uh, two different trees. Let me add it real quick. Uh, let's add this bush. Add it. So now I have the bush. Now there's some big bushes. Now let's say I just want to uh, erase the bush or let's say just the trees. I would have to hold control shift. And now, as you can see, I could only erase the trees. But if I go on the selected uh, bush ones, I could hold control shift and erase that as well. For this one is um, paint details. Paint details, you could add new brushes. And then when you add a new brush, uh, I don't think I have any new, uh, I don't think I have any brushes. Uh, but you could add brushes if you want. And then uh, you could also change the brush size, the, the opacity and the target. And then this right here, it just uh, paints details. So you could just click to paint uh, details on um, certain objects, but you would have to have built-in brushes for it. Oh, you could edit, oh, it's right here. You go to edit details, you add grass texture, and then if you have grass te textures, you could add grass textures. And then uh, for the grass texture, you could set minimum width, max high, uh, width, minimum height and max height, noise spread, uh, the color of the grass. So we could have the color of the grass. And then uh, if you want it to be billboard or not, uh, the, sh the texture, if you want the texture to be a billboard or not, then just click add. And then now you could just click anywhere you want and it'll add the grass for you. And as you can see, um, this is the grass. It's actual like blades of grass. And then uh, you could uh, edit the, the grass while you're uh, still here or while you, when you have added one, you could still edit afterwards. So let's say I put uh, 0 0.5 here, 0 0.8, the height, 0 0.2, 0 0.4. As you can see, the grass is changing. Uh, let's say a red over here, make it a little crazy. Then a blue, uh, maybe not like that, and an orange. And then you could just apply, and you could see the grass is different colors, different shape. And yeah, um, that's that for the grass. And uh, as you as I said, you could change the opacity. So if you don't want it to be as strong, uh, target strength, so it don't uh, show as much. And then, uh, you know, size. And then after that, there's the settings. For the terrain settings, there's grouping ID. This is um, for auto connection. This is kind of, if you're going to use coding, this is what you would use. Auto connect. This one over here allows the current tile, uh, terrain to automatically connect to the neighbor tiles. So this is pretty much for uh, when you're adding tiles or terrains. Uh, this is what this is for. Uh, so you could adjust this. So if you don't want it automatically connect, if you don't want to to draw or render the terrain, um, 
if you want to look if you see the terrain you can see the pixels ch changing so if you want it more pixelated or not um but yeah you could pretty much mess with this this is the base map distance uh so this is the the distance of the textures uh this is if you want to cast shadows it's shadows only two sided so you can see shadows uh you can have it on or you could just have shadows off so as you can see uh Kind of over here, turn it off, and then I could have two sided uh, reflection probes. I could have probes on or off. So if I don't have any probes, I could just turn it off, uh, or I could have blend probes and skybox. I could have just simple uh, reflection probes. I could also change the material of the terrain. So as you can see, now it's like a bright uh, terrain, and there's different little settings for it. You can mess around with this. This could be good probably for water to make a water terrain or a water uh, material. And then um, uh, there's tree and detail. Uh, yeah, tree and detail objects. So this is, of course, for the trees and stuff like that. This is uh, if you want to draw, uh, if the tree and grass should draw. If you want to bake the lights uh, and probes for trees. If you want to remove light probes, uh, you know, ringing. Preserve tree prototype layers. So if you wanted to preserve it, you could check it on. This is the details. So the distance, um, depending on the distance you are, the detail, the detail that would be. Detail density, you could change that. So the density of the details. So when you, you know, actually get close, the detail of it. Um, and also the distance of it. And then uh, tree distance. So the distance between the trees, uh, billboard start, uh, where will it start? The, the, the actual tree billboard or the texture of the billboard, uh, the fade length, uh, when uh, will it start fading, uh, the actual tree, uh, max mesh trees. So this is as uh, the max maximum amount of meshes the trees are able to have. As you can see here, it has tree distance, billboard start, fade, all that. Trees have no effect on speed trees. Trees, so these are um, giving me this little warning or air, uh, tip thingy because I'm using the standard assets trees. As I said, you could get it from the Unity uh, asset store. And uh, you cannot use the speed trees that they use in the asset store. And then after that, you could change... Uh, the wind settings i mean yeah the wind settings for grass so if uh let's see where's my grass at over here and uh i could change the speed of the grass um the size so as you can see the it's moving the grass the bend of the grass so how you want the the grass to actually bend and the grass tint so if you wanted to have a different tint as it already has you could leave it at the default one. If you leave it at the default one, it will just get the tint of the grass you have picked. But if not, you could actually uh, pick what you want your whole grass to be uh, with this. And then after that, there's the mesh resolution. So uh, uh, where are you at? So the more uh, this is, the more resolution, the width, the length, and the height, and all that would have. Of course, the more you have, it, the better it will look, but the slower uh, the performance might be, 2048. So as you can see, that disappeared because of the detail resolution. Uh, you would have to mess around with uh, all that to uh, get more detail out of your terrain. And then, uh, as you can see, you may reduce CPU drop calls overhead by setting the detail resolution per patch as high as possible. So this one as high as possible uh, relative to the detail resolution. So this one as high as possible relevant to this uh, resolution. You could compress holes to textures. So this is the, the, the settings for when you're painting uh, holes. So when you actually paint a hole you can see there's the hole right there. If you go to the settings, we could have uh, compressed holes on the textures or not. So compressed holes, if enables, whole textures will be compressed at runtime. 
and then uh, we could also change the height map resolutions if you change the height map resolution just be aware that uh, it could be performant heavy so you might uh, want to be careful when messing with all these uh, resolutions because they might be performant heavy might slow down uh, unity or crash it so just be careful with all these uh, resolutions uh, the default ones are really great, so I would leave it at that unless you're gonna make a game for PS4 or PS5 or even the Xbox or the new Xbox uh, consoles. Um, and then you could contribute global illumination. This has to do with the lighting settings. This is for the light mapping when you bake light maps. Uh, I've been talking about that lately in my other videos. I'll probably make a video about all about light map so you guys fully understand what a light map is later on after that you could scale the light map so you could scale it and also you got to be careful because that could uh, mess with your lighting and then you could change the parameters of uh, the light map to uh, whatever you want you just you know got to be careful because when you bake it it might be a very long long time before it actually bakes and uh yeah that's it for the terrain uh like i said in the next video just let me know if you guys want to uh learn about this ragdoll or even the Texmex pro or uh what else have i not covered or the tree or even the wind zone any of these let me know if you want me to cover it first and i'll cover it um uh, once again that's the terrain system and thank you for watching. Uh, please, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. If you want to see any future videos, hit that subscribe button and that notification button. And uh, once again, thank you.